But we actually thought, let's raise the bar. Instead of aiming to be better than our competitors, let's be better than humans. Kemal Mohajir is the founder and CEO of SoundHound. And uh, I have a, a deep pleasure knowing you for uh, since 2005, 2005, 2006, when we first met and you were still at Stanford. That's right. Let's start from there. Maybe start uh, before that. Give us a bit of your background. Um, how did you get to Stanford? Kind of the history up to Stanford and then Stanford SoundHound here today. <laughs> Well, thank you for having me, and yeah, absolutely. So I was born in Tehran. Uh, my family immigrated to Canada when I was 17. I finished high school there, uh, did my undergrad in engineering um, in Toronto, and, and then I decided that I wanted to be a technical founder to a very high-tech startup that would make a big impact in the world. Uh, describe SoundHound. Give us metrics of the scale of SoundHound. So we are a voice AI company. Um, we built the core technology in-house and that was very important to us. We wanted to own the technology so that we don't depend on other companies. And also by owning it, we could be disruptive. We could make the technology better than what el whatever is available uh, from alternatives. And that, that was a long journey. It took about 10 years. Um, and it now it creates an opportunity for us because even if you start today, in my opinion, it would take many years, maybe 10 years to build something like this. Now mm -hmm. that the demand for voice AI is very high, very few players can be a uh, provider of voice AI as a platform. Uh, so Sanhan, we are proud to be one of the only ones that has the core technology at a very high quality. Languages, how many languages do we speak? Uh, we went from one language to 22 languages in five years. Um, and then we've identified 114 variations across 38 languages that we've committed to. So we want to be the most comprehensive provider of voice AI globally, and that's a big commitment. And more than half of them already have been created and delivered to some customers. Uh, you asked about scale. Uh, last year, we uh, processed 1 billion queries. Uh, 1 billion. 1 billion queries. Um, a few years ago, that was we had almost no queries. So we built the technology, and you know some people you know, the technology was so good that we raised money at a billion dollar valuation just because of the technology. You're picking a pretty important fight with important players. The idea of competing with the giants used to be a scary thought for a lot of people, like both in, in hiring and fundraising. Uh, but now we've had a lot of success stories from kind of independent disruptors that came out of nowhere and disrupted legacy giants, like Uber disrupted the taxi, legacy giants. And then we had you know, Zoom, you know, it has an offering that you know, Microsoft has it, Google has it, uh, but you know, Zoom won the battle because they had focus, you know, good technology, good business model, and the world embraces you know, new disruptors. Uh, so it's, uh, it's not as concerning or scary as it used to be a few years ago, but in, in our history, that's been a long journey. For the majority of it, was a big discussion. Like, how do you compete with Google and how do you compete with Amazon? And you know, we constantly had to encourage our team. You know, don't be afraid. You know, somebody has. To, you know, Google wasn't the first engine, the first oh, yeah. search engine. Um, and it's possible to be better and do better. Um, and then the world needs an independent provider of voice AI, right? Because so tell us about that. Why do we need a independent AI voice yeah, provider. Yeah, voice AI is, is not a service. It is actually becomes the interface to your product, right? So mm -hmm. like if, you're, if you create a, an IoT device, uh, and let's say you want to add music streaming to it, uh, you may not want to go and create your own music streaming company, right? Because you can partner with Spotify or Pandora or others. Uh, and then music streaming becomes a feature that you add to your IoT device. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but voice AI is not the same. Voice AI is the interface to your product. It's the face of your product. It represents your brand. It, 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 uh, and you understand your users and products better than anyone else, right? So voice AI is something that you need to control. You need to customize. You need to, you need to, to be under your brand. Um, and you need to be able to constantly improve. And outsourcing that to, let's say, Amazon with Alexa means you, you created a product, and then they hijack your product. 
and they take your brand, they take your users, they take the data, and you don't get visibility over it. So you worked hard to create a brand and a product that became a shell for their service. Mm -hmm. And that is a big problem for most product creators, and uh, that has created a very big void and demand for in us. In a sense, you're saying that they're going to own the engagement with their customers. You're enabling that as an interface, but you're not hijacking it. Um, two, two questions. Question one, how do we know that we are better quality? And the question, second question is around, what is the ecosystem you've created so that people can monetize it? Computers are better than humans in computing, but they're not always better than humans at performing certain tasks. Like, we used to beat computers in chess, but now they beat us. Uh, but when it comes to language understanding, if you think about it, we talk to other humans with complex conversations, and we don't hesitate to ask something that it might be difficult or long or you know, with multiple criteria. But when we talk to personal assistants, like digital assistants, um, we lower our expectation. We talk in short, simple keyword-based questions, and we are nervous. Like They won't understand. And eventually, we find their boundaries, and we won't cross those boundaries. Like, like let's say you had Chinese food yesterday, and you don't want Chinese food today, and you are in a hotel, and you can ask the concierge, can you show me some restaurants around here except Chinese? And the concierge doesn't think you're weird, and they understand you, and they will point you in the right direction. Uh, but you don't ask, show me restaurants except Chinese to Google or Alexa or Siri, because <laughs> you don't think they will work. In fact, if you try, they will give you Chinese restaurants. You say, show me restaurants except Chinese, they'll say, here are some Chinese restaurants. Mm -hmm. right? So because the technology is not as good as humans. And our goal is to be better than humans. Right? So we want to be so good that people say, well, even humans cannot do mm -hmm. this. And that, that is our goal. Yeah, I always thought that's fascinating, because you're not just translating words. You're providing the meanings. The meaning is very different. Yeah and simple translation, a linear translation of the words are quite different. Mm -hmm. Give us an example of how does an uh, ecosystem in your business creates value for your customers or generate revenue for your customers. We categorize our business model in three pillars, and they can all coexist. And the third pillar uh, will create this ecosystem. So let me explain how that works. The first pillar is when we create, when we voice enable a product, the product pays us royalty for that. Uh, feature. So when we voice enable a car or an IoT device, uh, they pay us a royalty. The second pillar is when we voice enable a service, like a um, customer service. And a, an example we use often is food ordering. So when you call a restaurant, when was the last time you had a good experience? Usually they don't pick up the phone, and when they pick up the phone, they're distracted, and it's noisy, and they're dealing with other customers, and you don't really have a good experience. So mm -hmm. our pitch and to, the, to the restaurants is, um, especially now that you're, they're very understaffed, uh, let our voice AI take, take the calls, and you never miss a call. We t take care of every customer with great care, and we will upsell. So if somebody was going to order $20, we can try to turn that into a $30 ticket. Um, so, and for that, we receive uh, subscription revenue. Now, uh, on, that, on, the, on the second pillar, um, it's a domain-specific revenue function. Correct. So, so you talk about restaurants. Are there, what are the other Yeah, so we build the these packages for <laughs> businesses. Um, um, so restaurant, restaurant is like what books were to Amazon. They started with books and they did a really good job. And then they took that learning and applied it to music CD and DVDs. And then now they sell everything, right? So other examples like booking appointments with doctors oh, and, I see, I see. And, and dentists and hair salons and nail salons and um, uh, restaurant reservations, so it can be extended to, to many applications. Mm -hmm. uh, but food ordering was challenging enough that we thought if we do a really good job there, then everything else becomes easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now, that's the second pillar. Now, the first and sec second pillar are independent of each other. So the success of one doesn't depend on the success of the other one. And they are well-established business models. Now, that brings us to our third pillar, which is our disruptive ecosystem of bringing them together. So we'll bring these services to the products. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're driving your car, and you can talk to your car um, and use your voice to control the air conditioning and the radio and do navigation. And, and then you find a restaurant. And then we say, hey, I can also take your order now and have it be ready for pickup or deliver it to your house. So you don't have to call the restaurant. You don't have to drive to the restaurant. You don't have to pull over and use a mobile app. And the, the user is, wow, I'm very happy to hear it. Yes, I'm, I'm interested. You talk to your car, place the order. The restaurant is happy because they got a new lead, and they pay 
they pay for lead generation. And then we will share that revenue with the car maker that enabled the food ordering feature. Mm -hmm. So if you think about this, everyone saw value in this ecosystem. The end user, which is the most important one, got the convenience right. of ordering. The, the restaurant got a new lead. And the product creator, the, the car company in this case, or it could be a TV, um, they generated incremental revenue on a recurring basis from the usage while making their users happy. I see. I mean, there was an evolution um, of your thinking, you know, from where you started to where you are today. The end goal was always the same. We wanted mm -hmm. to be voice AI as a platform to enable many products to be able to con have conversations with, with humans. Uh, mm -hmm. That was always the goal. The path to that success, which we are still working towards, has obviously been a long journey. Um, first, we thought we need to own the core tech, uh, and that took a long time. Uh, and then we realized that it's not practical for a startup, uh, you know, a VC-funded startup, to spend 10 years in R&D mode. So we had to create products. Uh, and we created some products along the way, and as part of the technology became mature. Um, and one product that became successful was it started as a humming engine, right? So you could, because we were dealing with voice and search, and you could say, hey, if you can hum a song, we can tell you what it is. Uh, and, and then we added music identification to it, like a recorded audio, uh, and that's the Soundhan Music app uh, that uh, had more than 300 million downloads and generated revenue and attracted more talent, more funding. Uh, and it, in a sense, it enabled us to have our long journey, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know, to spend 10 years in R&D, either you have to be government funded or funded from a big tech company that has a lot of patience mm -hmm. um, or our very strange path that we enabled using other products that we created. Uh, sure. um, and then in 2015, we announced our voice AI as a platform, uh, which was the vision of the company since the beginning. Um, and we were the first to do it, voice AI as a platform. And it was such a good idea that big tech players started copying us, right? Like a month later, a year later, they started doing what we were doing. And um, I remember um, some of my um, you know, colleagues um, were scared. Like, oh my God, Amazon just copied us. And they created this Alexa platform. And not only that, they created a $100 million Alexa fund mm -hmm. to fund startups That's right. to adopt it. How are you going to compete with that? Uh, and if you, by the way, if you compare their press release, which came out of, af after our press release, like almost word by word identical. Like it was definitely inspired by what we had done. And my, the first thing I said to my team is, was, don't be afraid. Because you know, I heard, I don't know if this is right or not, but I heard the number one reason people drown is fear. Like you're in a very, you know, the, like a storm or something, you're, and you're drowning. If you're afraid, then you drown. And if you're not afraid, you have a chance. So we can't create a $100 million Houndify fund right, to pay other startups. Let's make the opposite. Let's create a $100 million funding round and go to bigger companies and say, you can invest in us and create this alliance um, to compete with the big tech that's going to take over everything. Right. And that was a very successful strategy. Uh, we attracted funding from car makers, device makers, service providers globally from Japan, from China, from Europe, from US. And we raised, first we raised $75 million, then we raised $100 million, then, then we raised another $100 million. And you have some uh, huge brands on the automotive sector, also on the mobile uh, side and consumer side. I mean, Tencent is an investor and you've done business with them. Yeah. Um, how are you getting ready to be a public company CEO? Uh, first, I'm, I'm uh, gathering a lot of people who are experienced better than me in what they do so that I can learn from them. Mm -hmm. So I hired a, a, a CFO who has public company experience. Um, very happy to be working with him. I'm learning a lot from him. And I have a lot of advisors. I have bankers and lawyers and you know, other colleagues and you know, people like yourself uh, that can help me along the way and mentor me. And um, I absorb advice and guidance like, like a sponge. <laughs> oh, it's exciting. Um, I mean, I remember I rang the bell at NASDAQ and uh, the world was uh, 
uh, was very different. It was April of 2000. And the NASDAQ dropped, I think, for a couple of thousand points. Wow. And nobody wanted to see us. And we were on the road. And um, it was a hard work, but we were, we were able to get it done. And we had the capital to survive the downturns. <laughs> and that, that capital helped us to build, ultimately, uh, you know, our company. But it was a, it's super exciting, super exciting to have that opportunity. You're one of the very few who have the opportunity. And now that you have the opportunity, you know, you can achieve that purpose for your team and yourself. Uh, it's very exciting. Um, congratulations. Thank you so I mean, much. A lot has been accomplished. A lot has been accomplished. And uh, I'm happy that we were part of your journey. I'm happy to be you know, close enough to see you grow and uh, build such an amazing, amazing company to compete with these giants. Uh, kudos to you. Thank you so much. Uh, with that, thank you. Thank you, Kevin, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me.